We're up to page 13 now, and this is the third time of me reading Lawn Boy. My question before we start is this. What are the advantages for Lawn Boy to mow for someone with a larger lawn? than the people with smaller lawns. What is the advantage? Turn and talk to your neighbor about it. So since this is a thinking task, are there any disadvantages to him mowing for a neighbour with a larger lawn. If there's a chance that you're not answering any of these questions, I really hope that you're spending some time listening to others, not just sitting there, but you're listening to ideas and then slowly you will get, you'll find it easier to share your thinking and your ideas. Not everything has a right or wrong answer. I'm trying to get you to get those brain cells ticking, the cogs moving in your brain. Please don't let one person dominate you. Okay, if you feel like you have something to say and someone is talking too much, there's not really too much, but they're talking all the time. You say, oh, next time it's my, I get to answer first. Or I get to share my ideas or please listen. You can say that really politely. But also if you're a speaker, if you enjoy speaking, remember that other people's ideas are also very valuable. And sometimes it's a good idea to listen to other people's ideas rather than speak. Sometimes. Or expand on their idea or comment on their idea. Give each other feedback. Don't just be the speaker if possible. Huh. This is called the law of increasing product demand versus flat production capacity. Let's see. There was a second then or a minute or maybe even a day when things could have remained short or sort of normal. The next day I moved the mower further into the richer part of the neighborhood where the lawns began to get larger while my mower seemed to get smaller. Of course, it didn't really, but that's how it felt. Soon it became obvious that I could only do three or maybe four lawns a day if I worked from just before dawn till just after dark. While it's true that the owners of the larger yards paid me more, I was getting 30 to $40 a lawn the second day. There was also the distance factor. I had to ride the mower from lawn to lawn. And as I moved further from our house, that meant it would take me longer to get home at night, pop, 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 down the edge of the street on the mower. Plus, I had to stop every few hours to buy more gas. That really chewed up my time even more than the bigger yards. Great mower, small petrol tank or gas tank. I must have been the only kid my age in what felt like a 10 block do you know what a block is between each road and a street? Yeah. So if you look out the window from one of our classroom, from one road to the next is called a block. I must have been the only kid my age in what felt like a 10 block radius who hadn't signed up for sleep away summer camp or who wasn't on baseball and or swim and or a tennis team for the summer. I was burned out on sports after spring basketball league, burned out, exhausted. All the other guys had real jobs, like all the cluck it bucket or dairy whip, I guess like Dunkin Donuts, and all the guys my age were mostly busy or gone. So I had a long summer full of nothing ahead of me, almost as if I'd known how things were going to work out which of course I hadn't. So he hadn't already committed to sports camps or anything else or any other job. He didn't really, he didn't know he had nothing to do. And then by luck, it wasn't even like he was looking for the lawnmower. His grandmother dropped off this lawnmower. It was like it was meant to be. More and more people wanted their lawns mowed. And on the second day I had eight jobs. And the fact was 
that I was fast approaching my limit. I couldn't do any more. Three lawns a day, plus refilling the tank from time to time, was all I could manage. And I would have to mow the lawns every week. Three lawns a day, once a week, 21 lawns. If I worked seven days, dawn till dark, no days off. Let's think about, well, let's stop for a minute. Think about back to how much he was earning an hour. Can anyone share that? Okay, think about the maths here. Three lawns a day. 21 lawns if I worked seven days dawn till dusk. He made approximately $630 a week. I wonder if we could work out by using division. If he made $630 a week, divided by how much did he get an hour? $8.50? How many hours did he work? If you want to work that out, you're going to have to stop the video and figure it out. It seemed like a staggering whoop of money. Summer was 12 weeks long, which meant that by the end of the vacation, I would have made over $7,500. Way, way more than I needed to buy that inner tube to fix my flat tire on my bicycle. And of course, there was no vacation, which ran through my head as I worked. No vacation, no summer fun, no bike trips with my best friend, Alan, when he came to visit his father in the summer. No vacation, $7,500. No summer fun, $7,500. Hmm. I just finished the second yard of the second day and I was already a little sick of the sight of grass. Grass, 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 grass. The only sound in the world seemed to be the sound of the mower. The vibration of the seat was the only feeling my butt had ever known. And then I met Arnold. He showed up on the sidewalk when I started the third yard of the day. Another customer, I thought. I had plenty of time to study him as I mowed towards him. Very short. I'm pretty short and he wasn't much taller than me and kind of round. Not fat, not heavy, just round. Everything about him was round, rounded shoulders, rounded hips, arms, legs, even his head was a ball. And his haircut looked like somebody had put a large ball on his head and cut round it with scissors. Wild clothes. I saw a 70s show on television once and everyone had shirts with impossibly long collars and colored patterns that looked like maybe someone had taken a bucket of flowers and dipped it in paint and thrown it at them. That was Arnold's style. He had a wide, wild tie and some kind of sport coat that looked suede, but it was cut with these wide, wide collars. Shoulders and his narrow waist didn't look too good on his round body. He looked like somebody who had flunked clown school. Oh my God, don't say anything like this. Don't call somebody like this. It would really offend them. He looked like somebody who had just flunked clown school. It was hard not to smile. He waved as I approached and I stopped and pulled the throttle back to the turtle. It was, um, I liked that, turtle or rabbit. Not written fast or slow, just a picture of a turtle and a rabbit. Everything should be like that. Highway signs, posted signs in the hallways at school. Turtle or rabbit. It's just so simple. I hear you're the new lawn boy. I nodded. He went on. My name's Arnold, Arnold Howe. And I'm over there on the corner. How much would you charge for my lawn? I looked past him. It was a good size, but flat? Ah, that's going to make a difference. Flat versus steep. It was flat. Not much detailed work. Would $40 be all right? $35 would be better. Well, other people would be paying me $40 for a lawn that big, and that seemed fair. I guess... The thing is, I have a cash flow problem, and I'll have to scramble to even find $35. I'm a stockbroker, and I work from home, and I'm a bit overextended right now. So you've spent too much money, you've overextended. All of which was more than I needed or wanted to know, but 
he seemed okay and I thought I had to be had he had an honest face which turned out to be right except that I'm not sure what a dishonest face would look like maybe a sneaky turtle or a shifty rabbit tell you what he said how would you like to barter take it out and trade now this is where the business side of things the enterprise side gets to you as well barter or trade don't know what you mean i didn't think he had have anything i wanted not clothes i wasn't going to trade clothes well like i said i work from home i do mostly day trading work with the small board so to speak i mean it's far out really groovy work and i make a nickel now and then you know moving this and that was he crazy or one of those people with something loose in his brain like i said grandma had you could my dad always says have you got a screw loose so pretending that you've, your brain has got screws in it somehow he forgot I, he was talking to a 12 year old kid with an old riding mower who knew nothing about the stock market. So like, uh, you're too young to have an account of your own, but I can run the $35 I owe you into my account, make a purchase for you. Purchase, buy something. Um, it'd be in my name, but you'd get the proceeds. What do you think? Don't know what you're talking about. You're going to buy something for me with my money you owe me, but you don't have. Exactly. What are you going to buy? Stocks. What stock? What do you mean? Shares in a company. You would buy shares in a company. Why? Because then if the company does well, the shares go up in value and you sell them to somebody else and you make money. That's how the stock market works. Is it that simple? Well, yes. Well, there's a whole bunch of rules and regulations and controls. That's pretty much how it works. Why? And you always make money? Mm, no, not always. That's the beauty of it. If the stock you buy goes down, you lose money. Ah. You have to be aware of that and buy carefully. Um, well then, the secret is to only buy stock that goes up in value. Yeah, Arnold nodded. How hard can that be? I shrugged. I didn't have a clue what I was talking about. But it seemed pretty basic. I had a pocket full of money. I hadn't figured out where in the house to hide it. And where my mother couldn't find it. So I kept it jammed in my pockets. Arnold made it seem all so easy. I still didn't really understand it, but I said, let's do it. <laughs>